All right, so this is what we're left with. This is a decent amount of well, material, which is that safe to touch it? Yep, still crazy warm, but it's really, really heavy. There's a lot in there. Loving the contrast, white and black, yin and yang. I've got that much wood in there, and that's actually a rough estimate as to how much wood I had before, times two, which would have been that much wood, okay? And that's how much wood I managed to burn down into ash and compile into here along with the coconut shells. So let's put this inside of here. Now this I called a fireplace. There is another word for it, maybe log burner. And the way it's built is completely different. First off, it keeps the heat inside. Doing this work inside of a traditional open fireplace just wouldn't work, it wouldn't get hot enough, okay? What these are built for, literally, is, is for this to get hot. And as this gets hot, that's what heats up the room, you see. So now I'm gonna open it up, set it up, and get it burning. It's now around about, I think, 12, maybe one o'clock in the a.m. I've got nothing going on tomorrow. So I'm gonna do this up until maybe the early hours of the morning, eight, maybe even nine. And once it's all done, I'm just gonna let it sit and I'll take it out tomorrow to be grounded up into dust after then processing it through into the day, further along into the Ormus making process, okay? Most people can find a crystal with a lid but the one that I brought here didn't come with one because of the size. So I purchased a graphite plate. Hopefully none of that would touch the graphite. And even if it does, I need to shift the graphite into ether. So let's add this on top. I measured it accurately. Yep, completely seals it. Now I just need to fill it up with wood. Okay, so we've got some good news and we've got some bad news. The good news is, is that it basically exploded whilst it was in the crucible. I had it heating up for over five hours. Yeah. And see that blue right there? That's copper of oxide. That means that the degradation process actually worked when it came to breaking down the copper. Most people, most people, just add the sodium hydroxide to copper. They don't break down the copper first using electrolysis and that can leave the little nuggets that I was talking about before that end up melting together and falling to the bottom of the crucible. But this shows that it works this way when you break it down with electrolysis first. Now, I thought that maybe I was gonna lose what came out, but I didn't. It was so different compared to the rest of the wood inside of the fireplace that I actually managed to spot it out and take it out and savor it, okay? So that's what exploded and came out. And uh, when this was melting, it actually looked like glass. It was really cool, it was really shiny. The bad news is, however, is that that's clearly stuck inside the crucible. So, I'm gonna have to destroy it in order to get it out. I checked under the blanket anyway. I turned over the clothes on the floor. And when I didn't find her there, Hesitantly open the closet. You know what I just realized? I did the next part of the Oromus making project without you. Uh, <laughs> I got so caught up in everything that I ended up just doing it without recording the process. It wasn't even in my mind. So I'm just gonna tell you guys what I did and show you the project thus far and I'll also talk about something else that I've been recently doing something that has been really preoccupying my mind what I did was I cracked open the crucible and about half of the matter was pretty much a brick and the rest was chunks of rock 
I then put it inside of a saucepan and I went at it with a hammer and a screwdriver to break up that massive rock into many little tiny rocks. I then added those little rocks into a water bottle. I sliced the top open, filled up the water bottle, duct taped it back up, but then I put it inside of a bag. I then smashed it to pieces with a hammer. After putting the rocks inside the five liter jar, I then started to add hydrochloric acid to the mix, slowly, ever so slowly. Uh, sometimes I probably should have done it a little bit more slow actually because it reacted with the amount of sodium hydroxide that I put within the burn quite substantially. Uh, it really did smell in here. Matter of fact, it still smells in here. It smells like fart, like a giant giant who'd eaten meat for a very long time and had it putrefying within its guts, decided to defecate in my house. It stinks in here. <laughs> and I've opened up all the windows. But it's not going anywhere, not really. It seems to have left a stain in my kitchen. Very quickly, the rocks melted. Melted to a smoothie consistency. Okay, and you know what? It didn't even reach, that I know of, the pH I wanted it to reach. I think that's because I might have did it a bit too fast. I'm not too sure yet. Basically, it might have reached zero and the reason as to why I really don't know is because whilst I was lowering the pH down to zero it actually wiped out two of my pH meters it broke them so I ordered a new one online it's coming on the fourth it's three days from now and I also ordered some more gas mask filters because my one that I was wearing wasn't really doing the job you know, I've used it for quite a while now and it needs new carbon filters. So now I'm going to show you the jar, the 5 litre jar, which has the, I guess you can call it slurry at this point, participate. It's still kind of warm. Okay, so now that is a lot, a lot of matter to create this Oremus out of. That's, that's a lot. Usually I only have about, say that much, you know, maybe an inch at the bottom of something. And I get pretty much that much Oremus out of it. So this is going to create quite a lot. It's going to have a huge yield. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, do you know what? I'm pretty sure this hasn't dropped down to zero pH. Otherwise those tiny rocks would have turned to dust by now. They would have melted completely. So, once everything comes, I'm going to fill this jar up to here with water. And then what I'll do is, is I'll add some more hydrochloric acid to the mix, making sure that I go really slowly so I don't break my new pH meter. And, yeah. Hi guys, so today I'm going to be continuing with my Oromos experiment, because today is the day leading up to my Florida little trip. I'm going to be there for about two months. And so in order for me to make this almost the way that I want to make it, to have it all settle properly, I'm going to actually let it sit for two months. I'm going to get to a stage in the process before I flip it into Oromus where all of the precipitate you'll see later on would have sat once I come back from Florida and then I can take the clear layer off the top and flip that straight into Oromus. I'm going to show you actually what I'm talking about because I've already done it with the the prep Oromus. This one right here has been set for about a week and a half. As you can see the top is relatively clear. It is clear but there are some particles in there which are not heavy enough. They're smaller than the water molecules and for that reason they've become a colloidal and they have stayed suspended within the solution above giving it a yellow ting uh, a tincture color and at the bottom you got the matter that has sat so when i get back from florida what you're basically going 
going to see is a bigger version of this. 